Hello viewers and welcome to Sharp Business. It's yet another Wednesday where we are talking about the art of starting and growing a business. And with us today, we have Wilson, who is a businessman. He's a young man who is coming up very well. And today he is going to take us through on how to start and grow a business. You're welcome. Karibu sana, Willi. Asante sana. Good to see you. Good to see you too, John. Long time. Yes. I've been looking for you. I'm here now. Now at least uh, things are going well, right? Yes. Yes. I now, yeah. uh -huh. who is Wilson? Yeah, Wilson is a young man who has a, a great passion to do business. I, I, I think I, I got some motivation to start doing business at a very early stage. I used to admire my dad. My dad is a, is a businessman in the world of uh, construction industry. And also my mom used to sell mtumba when I was young. Mm -hmm. So I, I started getting motivated when I was a young person to do business, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. Wilson, where did you start? How was it like? Where did you even start? What uh, was that point? Uh, my very uh, beginning was when I was in Form 1, I bought my first camera. That's when I started doing business, when mm -hmm. I was in high school. Uh, I was motivated by the fact that my dad and my mom wanted us to be independent at an early stage. So I used to buy my own things. Sometimes I used to buy my own uniform using the money I used to make uh, with the camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my fourth form, I, I, I didn't have uh, the ability to go to college immediately. So the only thing available for me then mm -hmm. was business. So I, I was able to grow the business of photography and then later I, I started doing t-shirt printing and then music. I, most of the people know me in the line of music. Yeah, Yeah, I've heard that you have a number of albums, right? Yes, we've done an album. Uh, the first album mm -hmm. we did, mm -hmm. Tai Wake, helped me to also venture into business because we did our very first t-shirt printing business using the label Tai Wake. Tai Wake. Tai Wake was an album. And then uh, mm. I, I started seeing the need to do business in line with, with ministry because we started doing ministry and then ministry is so much involving. You, you find that you need, you need money all the time. When you are reaching out to students and you are, when you're going to the studio to produce music, you need money. Mm -hmm. So the only way out was to engage in, in business. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, what motivated you to get into business? It could have chosen to be employed. What really motivated you to start business? Uh, yeah. I can't say that I've never been employed in my life because mm -hmm. uh, but the, the biggest motivation was the fact that after finishing my fourth form, I didn't get the opportunity to go to university or college. And so there were some opportunities coming up and uh, they needed someone to have maybe a certain kind of experience. And so the immediate thing I had at that particular time was to engage in business. Uh, another motivation that came when I realized I have a calling for music, to compose music. After some time, I, I, I started thinking about what I can do in the, in the line of music to get money. So I got motivated by, by ministry to do business because ministry requires money. Okay, but, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the key lessons have you learned now in business? For how long have you been in business? I think for about 10 years about now. About 10 <laughs> years, that's a whole jacket, right? <laughs> yeah, about 10 years I've mm -hmm. been doing business, but mm -hmm. different kinds of business, but they mm -hmm. are all related. Mm -hmm. One of the major things I've learned, mm -hmm. one of the major things I've learned is mm -hmm. that you have to look at something that you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. You don't just do business for the sake of, of doing business, mm -hmm. but you have to look at something that you, are, you feel that you are motivated to do. Uh, for example, singing is a ministry but on the other hand it can be a business mm -hmm. but when i do it in the form of business i sell the cds i sell the t-shirts i'm passionate about it nobody is forcing me to do it mm -hmm. and then the other thing is that you should not be motivated by money money should not be the major mm -hmm. factor and mm -hmm. i think that's one of the mistakes that people make mm -hmm. because there are so many challenges that you find in the course of doing business so if your motivation is just money you'll easily give up along the way. Mm -hmm. But if you find something else that motivates you, uh, you'll have the power and the zeal to, to continue. Yeah, so I, I, I think I got motivated by, 
the zeal for ministry mm -hmm. and doing something that I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I love photography. I entered the business of photography. I love the printing work. I entered in the computer field. So mm -hmm. I've, I've been doing different things, but they are all related. Mm -hmm. They're interrelated, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you started, I know it wasn't easy. And this is where most of the young people are getting into. You yeah. sometimes meet challenges and you feel like you really want to let go. You really want to do something different. Huh? Yeah. And most of them are even opting to go for employment rather than continuing with their businesses. Now, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges did you encounter along the way? One of the major challenges I had mm -hmm. is that uh, when I started my first business of photography, I didn't have an office. So I was doing, uh, uh, it was at that particular time when you, I used to go round and round in Kirinyaga town, mm -hmm. in Kirinyaga town, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a specific office. So I had a challenge of getting a location for the business. That's one of the major challenges that you may find. Mm -hmm. uh, I got employed in uh, Barclays Bank, a contract, and then after two years, I, I, I was laid off, my contract ended. And so I had to think critically about my, my future. I needed an, an office then. Mm -hmm. So I had the challenge of capital, obviously. Mm -hmm. And mo most young people don't have enough money to start their businesses. Mm -hmm. But I acted by, uh, I'm a person of faith. So I acted by faith. I, mm -hmm. I, I just approached a person and I told him, I, I want to start a business here. Mm -hmm. And at first they didn't agree. I didn't have enough money. But there's, uh, I think there's a, a need for young people to develop capacity to convince and even to clearly share their vision. I shared my vision with this man. And after one week, he called me and he told me, yes, you can come and start. And so I, st I just started small. Yeah, and I remember I started with, um, we have a, a shop in Kirgoya town. It's called Utiki Computers. Currently, it's registered under uh, transformative enterprises. It has grown to a level whereby we supply things in schools and institutions and obviously through the management of my brother that I have mentored. And we had, we started with one computer and one printer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was our starting point. Wow. One computer and one printer. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of printers, they are called in inkjet mm -hmm. printers. You really struggle to make them work, but you are able to struggle through. I think another thing I, uh, during our start, I had a challenge. I didn't have any business skills. Later, I went to college and I did business management. But before that, I had started a business without any skills. So uh, I had a challenge of having a plan on where I want the business to go. But there's an importance of having connections with people because there's a guy who came along my way and he challenged me. He told me, Wilson, what's your plan? Where do you want to be in the next five years? And that guy, I, I think that was in 2011, mm -hmm. that's six years ago. Mm -hmm. And he challenged me to have a business plan. I didn't have any idea mm -hmm. on how to write a business plan. But then he gave me a format, he sent me an email. I struggled for two weeks. And then after the two weeks, I was able to, to come up with a, a plan. And I, I remember the budget was around 60,000. Mm -hmm. And I was asking myself as a young person, 60,000, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But then this guy told me, if you have a plan, at least it's clear in your mind of what you need. Because some young people, you just enter into a business, you don't know exactly what you need, and then you, you get frustrated along the way. <laughs> but this plan helped me, and then this guy told me, I think I, I can assist you with some money. Uh, and you see, for, for young people when you're starting business, if the challenge is capital, you have to ask yourself, what are the resources around you? you may find that there are people who may be willing to share with your vision. So this guy told me that he'll, he'll be part of that vision. And he funded me with the 60000 that I needed for, mm -hmm. for the continuity of the business. Wow. Yeah. Now, should I say from your point, eh, yeah. what we are missing today is that we have so many people who are starting businesses without the business uh, plan. Yeah. without their plan yeah and can we say that's why our th the, their businesses are failing because they don't know where they want the business to be in 10 years yeah. and if you ask them they want the business to grow yeah but the daily uh daily routines of how to run a business they don't have those rules so yeah. can we say that the reason as to why so many people are failing it's because they don't have plans of what they want to do yeah we, we can say that you know having a plan doesn't mean you won't get the challenges mm -hmm. as you're doing the business but then when you have a plan you'll be able to spot where the challenges are coming from and then you'll be able to come up with solutions 
Now, if you don't have a plan, it's like you're doing things for the sake of doing. So when you get a loss, you, don't, you are not able to attribute that loss to something. So you don't know where to improve. For example, we do different kinds of products and, and services. So when you have a plan, you're able to know that the passport business is bringing a certain kind of money, another kind of business is bringing a certain amount of money. And so you are able to gauge yourself and to know where to put your strength in. So if you don't have a plan, you'll find yourself, you may concentrate with something that is not profitable to the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are some things we started and we started laying them off and we started concentrating, concentrating on the major things. Yeah. So it's important for you to have a plan so that you can be able to gauge your growth and your performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, another key lesson I think I have learned in the course of time, uh, I was so poor in <coughs> keeping records. Mm -hmm business records and so when you have a business plan you there there is that financial section that you have to be consistent on so I, I i started developing the capacity to to gauge the performance of business based on the daily records mm -hmm. and that has really helped me a lot and i've trained that to my my brother who has taken over the business so well uh, and uh, currently the business is doing well and he's the one managing it yeah mm -hmm. now you Along the way, you were able to meet challenges. And uh, I believe all businesses have that one challenge which makes you feel like you want to close the business. Yes. What was that one challenge that you felt like you really wow. needed to close down everything? Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a moment in my life when I was in business for, I think, for the first two years. That was the most challenging part of that business because I had, I had made a business plan. I had had the, the money to start. Uh, it was a small amount, the 60,000. But then the projections I had made, they were so high. And two years down the line, I was not able to meet the targets. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was so much discouraged after looking at the financial situation of the business for two years and nothing was going up. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my lowest moments. But then, I believe if you have the mind of business, uh, you should be able to overcome the challenge. And the way, uh, the way I was able to overcome that challenge is that uh, I shared that with another person who was so much informed about the business trends. You know, every business has a, has, a, has a cycle. And so he told me that for the two years, it's like you are learning. So you should not give up along the way. Mm -hmm. You're just learning. So you, you just continue. And in the course of time, you'll find that the business will, will grow. So that person helped me to, uh, to, sust to sustain the business and to wait for about uh, one year. And then the business started growing and growing again. And by the way, within one year, we were able now to venture into supplies, supplying schools and public institutions, which we were not doing before. Mm -hmm. Because I realized there were some gaps that we were not filling. Mm -hmm. Now we were able to fill those gaps. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Wilson, yes. we'll get back to you. Mm. Our viewers, this is Sharp Business, where we want you to be the game changer. That was Wilson, and that is his story. We'll be right back after the short break. Please don't go away. Pillar TV, shaping your destiny. Shukra ni mpenzi mtazamaji wa runinga ya pila. Kumbuka runinga ya pila inazidi kutathmin hatma yako. Nafamika kama Jimmy Joroge. I believe the youth of this generation yeah. can live pure and holy lives. Uh -huh. Even when having relationships. Uh -huh. Yes. Our goal is a goal of second chances. Na haijalisi kwenye umetoka ama yale umetenda ama watu wanakuona namna gani na kwa kifupi tu naweza tueleza ni vipi ulianzia hili ndoto la Are you 
looking for an office that is spacious, located in a certain environment, has ample parking with security? Then look no further. Oasis of Hope Building, located next to SCK St. Paul's Church, is offering offices space at an affordable price. For more information, call 020-212-4416. Oasis of Hope Building, the best place to be. Hila TV, shaping your destiny. Welcome back to Sharp Business. Today, on today's segment, we have Wilson, who is taking us through on the art of starting and growing a business. Welcome back. Yes. Now, Wilson, earlier on, you talked about uh, the flexibility in business, how you were able to start other businesses like... Uh, in the midst of your business, you started supplying things in schools. Yeah. What can you say about flexibility in business? You know, when you are facing challenges in your business, you have to think of a way out. And that's why you should not have a rigid structure in business. Uh, for example, I, I started my business as a photography business, and then I thought of having an office where people can come and find me. Now, in that office, I realized I cannot just do photography and so I started doing uh, a lot of design work and uh, photocopies. I had one printer and uh, one computer. But then in the course of time after two years I realized I'm not making enough profits to meet the expenses of the business. And uh, I, I started thinking now of how I can start doing a, a lot of t-shirt printing uh, and then the business started growing now in the level of uh, thinking of supplying people with, with t-shirts and I had a connection of people and who are advising me about school, school and other institutions that need supplies, computer supplies. So I had to think in those levels. So as a businessman, you have to open your mind to new ideas and new thoughts. You should not stick to what you believed in before when you started the business. But, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you, should, you, you should be able to answer the why. Why are you in that business? What, what is the main purpose of that business? And so when, when I thought about that, I was able to venture into other areas relating to the business. So the, the computer industry, you find that there are changing trends. Uh, there are people who initially, people used to go to a certain shop for photocopy services, but after some time you find that schools are buying computers and they are buying uh, printers. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking, instead of waiting for people to come and bring me business, I can buy these machines and supply to them. And that's how I started doing uh, and growing the business. And I realized I, I was getting more profit from that mm -hmm. uh, compared to the initial start off. Okay. Yes. Now, you, you had talked about someone who mentored you through and told you that you you really need to have a business plan. Yes. You also funded your business. Yeah. What can you say about mentorship? Because, uh, because I've actually had you also mentoring your brother. Yes. Who is uh, doing in, so in well. In business, there mm -hmm. are people who are called, uh, it's also a business term mm -hmm. currently. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are called angels, mm -hmm. angel investors. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who are, I can say they are sent of God. Uh, they, they, they really love what you do. They are passionate about it. They are, they are ready to tell you when you're going wrong. And so this person was able to take me through having a business plan. And he did not leave it there. He was able to follow me through when I was making losses and giving me advice. And I can attribute my success to him. Okay, later I was able to go to college and do business management. And uh, uh, having a cause is also important because there are so many things I was able to learn. So there are people who come into your life and they mentor you towards business and you have to listen to them. You don't assume that you know everything. As a businessman, it's good to be open-minded. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also important, I've learned that I also need to mentor other people behind me because as the business grow, you realize you cannot be able to do everything in that business. There's a time I realize I cannot stay in that shop for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm a people person, I love moving a lot. I cannot stay in one place for a long time period of time. Mm -hmm. So I had to mentor people who were able to do what I was doing. I was able to mentor my, my brother, my second born brother, and he took over the business. He was able to do so much. And then he joined university. 
And then after that, I was able to mentor the other brother into the same kind of business. And he's currently doing things even better than myself. There, <laughs> there are some things I cannot be able to do, and he is able to do. So, and I'm, I'm, it gives me an opportunity to venture into other areas of my life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, would you say this, eh? Hmm. The problem we are having with the young people is not that they don't have ideas, eh? Hmm. But they don't have market level ideas. Hmm. Those ideas that we can share in the market. Or yeah. well, what is the issue with our young people? The issue of ideas. You talk to them, they have so many ideas. Hmm. But if you tell them to start something, they don't have a way out. They even don't know where to even start. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the biggest challenge we have right now, mm -hmm. and it's a challenge I had, is, is something we call fear. Mm -hmm. Fear to start. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it's, uh, sometimes you have all the reasons. You have all the reasons to fear because you don't have the capital. Maybe your parents cannot support you. You are looking at opportunities and you feel like there is so much competition. And so you have the fear to start. But I, I usually say that nothing happens until you try and, and you start. So you may have an idea, but as long as the idea is in your mind, it will never help you. You have to think of a way, of a plan, on how you bring the idea out of your mind into something practical. You better start <coughs> small and then grow big. Mm -hmm. But don't wait for that time when you have uh, a lot of money for you to implement your idea. Start mm -hmm. with what you have. Mm -hmm. So don't wait for those uh, opportunities when you have everything that you need. Mm -hmm. Start small. Start small. Yes. Now, let me ask you. No, since all businesses are shifting to the digital era, yeah. this is the evolution of digital. Yeah. How prepared are you in your business, for yes, instance? Uh, uh, to be practical, uh, currently we are doing a lot of supplies of uh, laptops and, uh, and printers and even CPUs. But you find that we don't stock them at our shop because there's this thing about online business. Currently, we don't have an, a website, but we usually market through social media. So you'll find there are people who have never come to our shop, but they are our customers. And these people came to know us through the social media. So you find, uh, like, um, for example, I have students from Park University who just email me. They tell me what they need, and then I, I make a supply to them, and they pay. So it's, uh, it's important for you to make use of the social media, but you're also thinking of of our website, you are working on having a, a website so that we can go fully digital. So we, we usually do WhatsApp messages, we do uh, normal messages, and we do emails. Yeah. Now, how has it helped you to do business in the digital way? Has it been different? Like uh, Yeah, it's so different. Mm -hmm. Because one thing, if you don't utilize the social media, the only people who will come to your business are the people who are around you. The people who, who, who know maybe the physical location of your business. Mm -hmm. But you see, the social media, you are able to network with people even beyond your, your locality. That's why you find we can be in Kerugoya, but you can do T-shirt printing for people who are in Nakuru, for people who are in Nairobi, in different areas. You just know the logistic on how to send the items that they need. Mm -hmm. So you see, the, there's that change. Initially, we didn't have that. So it has helped us to grow and widen and broaden our network. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, since uh, social media is giving a very good platform, eh? mm -hmm. and we see most of the young people are not using that platform well, what can you tell them? Because we have an issue with our young people. Yeah. Or oh, they like posting a funny things and tagging themselves. I mean, I even I don't know. I, I think about social media, mm -hmm. you, have to be, you have to be so deliberate mm -hmm. on what exactly you want. Mm -hmm. So if you have a business mind, You'll, you'll network with people who are in the same line of business. You'll network with people who have, uh, who, who have maybe, uh, you, you can find the distributors in the social media. For example, there's a supplier I, I, I used to have. And then I realized that in the social media, I can access different suppliers of different products and I can be able to compare the prices. So young people, it's just a matter of, having priority. When you go to the social media, what do you want? If you have a business mind, you'll get the opportunities. If you don't have a business mind, you'll waste any opportunity that comes along your way. Mm -hmm. And you waste a lot of time. You find that you'll spend a lot of time chatting 
but there's nothing coming forth. Now, let me ask, the issue of social media, mm. does it come also with branding? Does it tag along branding? Because you cannot tell me you're going to supply me things, eh? Yeah. And what I see you tagging yourself with, or on online, yes. does it come with branding? Yes, you have mm -hmm. to brand yourself. For example, uh, mm -hmm. when you are doing business, you have to show your products. So your personality, even in the social media, you know, s social media speaks a lot about your integrity, about uh, your character. And you know, there are things that we call business ethics. There's a way you can portray yourself in the social media and people will not trust you. So when you promise something, they'll see this guy cannot deliver. But there's a way you portray yourself. Uh, I thank God because of uh, the way I've been able to grow. I've realized that integrity and trust is key in business. So the photos I post, the messages I do, I have to uphold integrity and trust. And that's why you'll find there are people who don't know me at a personal level, but based on the social media, they can trust me to deliver something to them. I can tell you for sure that there are people who pay me without seeing what I'm selling to them. I just tell them, I sell laptops, and they tell me just, uh, uh, ju just I'll send you the money and then you send me the laptop, and they send the money, mm -hmm. and they don't know me. They don't know you. Yeah, it's just through the social media. Mm -hmm through the image I've, I've created and, uh, and the personal branding I've done uh, about myself. Now, with that notion of you doing business online, yeah. does one have to get an office to do business or the can they do it online? Currently, the trend has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many people who are doing business. For example, I, I have my own sister who is doing business and she doesn't have an office. She, she sells handbags and it's fully online. She gets supplies from outside the country and then she markets through, through the social media and customers just call her and she delivers to them. So you don't need to have a physical location of a business. But it also depends on the dynamics of your business. Like for our business we find we need to have that physical location mm -hmm. but not everything is within that, that, that business. There's, there are several things that we market online and you don't have to put the stock in the business. Mm -hmm. And so it, it helps you to, to save on your costs. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, when you want to start, Wilson, eh? yeah. there's so many young people who are watching us today. Yes. And they're asking themselves, if, if Wilson was able to start with one computer and one printer, maybe they, can, they have a lot on their disposal. Eh? Yeah. What can you tell them? How can they start? There are two major things when you want to start a business, I think. And the first one is that you have to do a personal evaluation of yourself as an individual. You have to understand yourself and your interests and your, and your passions. And then secondly, you have to answer the why. Why do you want to get into that business? If you are able to answer those questions, then the how will be automatic. Because most of the people think about how am I going to to do this, how am I do going to do that? But they have not answered the why am I doing it? So if you're able to answer the why in any kind of business, then the, the plan will automatically come mm -hmm. because you'll be seeing the outcome even before you start it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you need to start small, you think about your passions, your interests, and then answer the why, and then start where you are with what you have, mm -hmm. yes. Now, when you started your business as we end our show today, yeah. Have you gotten any funding from any government institution? Now, uh, as I told you earlier, we have different areas in our business. And I can say that the only area that we got funding was in the line of music. As we started our music uh, career in the UTQ, in the UTQ ministry, we got funded by the Youth Fund mm. with 50,000. Mm. And that was able to help us have a start in recording our music. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's important to seek those opportunities. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, Wilson, it was really nice having you today. Yeah. And uh, we will actually call for you again next time. Thank eh? you. I'll be glad to come. Yeah. Thank you. We've come to the end of our show today. I was your host, John Mulwa. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you.